All right, so today we're gonna be working on this 95 Toyota 4Runner. So the issue is it was having a sporadic RPM uh, jump and fall every time you would go over 1500 RPMs. I'll put a little snippet in of that happening. It'd go up and just bounce down. So I replaced the TPS, which is super easy to replace, two screws, and you calibrate it with a multimeter. Uh, LCE has a great guide on how to do that. Um, so I replaced that. That didn't fix the issue, so I went to the junkyard, grabbed a MAF, because the other one looked like somebody had cracked into it and maybe it was corroded, so I tested it and it seemed fine but i went and replaced it anyway that seemed to completely fix the issue so I drove it around for about you know 20 30 minutes and uh once the transmission heated up to temps where the overdrive kicks on and and, and will work uh a shifting issue started to occur where it wouldn't reach second gear so foot to the floor doesn't want to shift at all so my next thought was shift solenoids so what i did was bought a kit on amazon and i'm just gonna unbolt the dipstick and pop off the cover and replace those three solenoids along with the filter and fluid and we'll see if that gets it fixed and i'll show you how to do it so it turns out the idiot that replaced the fluid last or did the last change stripped the threads into the oil pan so uh it's gonna be a pretty big bitch trying to pry this thing off and uh and then i'm probably gonna have to get a new oil pan or retap that and uh see if i can get a bigger bolt but i'll let you know if i get this bolt off do not over torque these because it is a big pain in the ass. There's a little update. Uh, if you can't get your drain bolt out because the previous owner stripped it, loosen the, uh, the bolts that hold the dipstick tube in. There's a 14 and a 10, or it's a 12 and a 10. And then loosen all of the 10 millimeter bolts around it. Get a big ass bucket and crack it free and try not to spill it everywhere. All right, got the oil pan off. Tell somebody's been in here. Um, turns out you do not need to take these two bolts off. You know, there's a section of the dipstick that pops out. I did not know that, but for future reference, do not have to take those out. This slips straight down if you pull good and hard. And uh, I'm gonna get all this cleaned up and put the new solenoids in along with a filter and a proper gasket rather than this gasket maker. That's probably why it was leaking so bad along with the stripped drain plug. All right, got this all cleaned up and drilled out the bolt could not press it down get any any threads to catch so i just kept stepping up the size a bit drilled it out and tomorrow i'm gonna go grab a tap and a correct bolt size for that tap and that'll fix that issue next got transmission filter with a new gasket for the oil pan and the new shift solenoids so these were like $65 from Amazon the solenoid part should be exactly the same the only difference 
would be the bracket. I think I'm going to have to drill out these holes just a little bit for them to fit the transmission in these certain, you know, parts where the old solenoids bolt up. The reason why I went with these is because they're $65 rather than going to any auto parts store and getting a set for $260 or more. So just go with these, same solenoid, just drill out the, the bracket and I'll show you where and how I'm going to do that and pop them in. They should work perfectly fine and especially with this new transmission filter and gasket it'll be a lot better than this crappy rtv just you don't need to use this just go with a gasket it'll it won't leak and for fluid go with uh dextron number three I know on the dipstick tube it says two, but they changed it to three, so Dextron three. When you're changing this transmission filter, there are nine, I think it's nine of these bolts. These are eight millimeter bolts. Just undo them, drop it off, and slide the new one in. Pretty simple. For these transmission shift solenoids, there's one bolt, I believe they are a 10. Yep, they are 10 and one clip. So some of them that you'll get ha will have a, a little black wire coming off and all you gotta do is just ground that right underneath the bracket or between the bolt and the bracket that hold the shift solenoid on. So once again, just undo the clip, undo the bolt and it will pop out. Careful because they will they filled with transmission fluid, so beware of that. This is filled with oil, so as soon as you try to pull it off, If you're ever gonna do your uh, kick down cable for your transmission, you gotta take this pan off. There's a bolt right up here that holds the cable through and it just like your throttle goes around over, over through there. If you can see that right here. All right, that's what it looks like with the filter off. And go ahead and throw the new filter on and start pulling these three solenoids. There's one, and these are original.
So this is what they look like in comparison. So these are the aftermarket ones. These are the Toyota ones. See the bracket is much different. But it looks like the hole should be in the same place on these two. If not, it'd be super slight uh, modification to make them work. And then this one looks pretty identical. Yeah. Alright. Slap them in. This one. It's right here. So it looks like the only one that I'm going to have to modify is this one, right here. This one lines up perfectly fine, this one back here fits perfectly fine, clipped in already, but this one is just a little off, so not a big deal, I'll drill that out, you know, just stretch that hole backwards a little bit. And then flip everything up. All right, I got the stripped oil pan problem figured out. So went down to the local hardware store and they gave me a bolt, a washer, and retapped the hole for me for 89 cents so super super cheap easy fix um yeah can't complain there retap threads new nut and fiber washer because it'll probably help it not leak as much and as an update for what's going on under here so it's just these nine bolts, two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, or it's 11 bolts, whatever it is. Take that off and place that, that's the filter. And then here are the new solenoids installed. So this is the only one that I had to modify. The hole for the, the bracket was just back slightly past the the threads so all i did was just widen that hole with the drill bit and boom goes straight in all the other ones fit in there perfectly fine they go straight in so not sure what the people were talking about on amazon because the reviews were saying that they don't fit none of the solenoids fit whatsoever but this is on a <laughs> Uh, 
This is on a A340H. That's the tranny. Fits perfectly fine. Slap the oil pan back on the dipstick tube and get it filled up with fluid. Take it for a test drive. So got everything put back together and filled up the transmission fluid, took it for a test drive, drove great, solenoid shift perfectly um, until the transmission heats up and fourth gear, the overdrive gear, uh, you know, warms up or whatever. The I, There's a sensor that doesn't allow it to kick on until it engines a certain temperature. I'm pretty positive. So... Once that starts working, something triggers the computer to throw a code and not allow the solenoids to shift. So I'm pretty positive that it's a short or a problem with ECU, but just to double check everything, um, I'm going to check continuity between the solenoids and the ECU in the kick panel. Um, basically continuity between the harness to make sure there's no cuts or tears. Uh, I cannot check codes from my diagnostic port because it's not working um and trust me i've tried i took apart the entire back side of it and depinned the te1 and made sure that i was connected to it properly because i was thinking maybe i was just doing something wrong or somebody broke off the terminal um but trust me i was connected connected to it jumped them they do not work all e1 is is a ground, so it's just a body ground. Um, so technically, you can just jump TE1 to any ground, and it should work the exact same. So if it's not working for you, you might just have a problem with this ground wire. So all you got to do is, if jumping between the two terminals isn't working, try jumping TE1 straight to a ground, like, you know, on the engine lift point. So try that. What I'm going to do is... It is a uh, purple with a white stripe is the data uh, cable. So that's TE1. I'm going to check continuity between that and uh, straight into the ECU. So I'm going to pull the ECU connector out and then just check and make sure, uh, you know, something didn't happen with the harness going through there. And I'm going to do all of that in uh, the second video. So... The other one is just how to change the solenoids, and this one will be how to diagnose what's going on and actually how to test the solenoids. So if you want to know how to do that, then uh, tune into the next one.